This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host this week is the Omega. OMG. OMG, it's the OMEGA. Wow, that makes you sound like a rapper. <laughs> Full uh, on the original OMEGA. There you okay. go. <laughs> yeah. How many, you know, this begs the question, how many lesbian rappers are actually out there? Well, there's got to be at least one or two. There has to be. We, we, we must, we insert, must research this. Insert Queen Latifah joke here. <laughs> well, wait, is she a lesbian or, or... I don't, I don't know. I know it's been, like, alleged, but she's never formally come out, so... Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where... It's like how with Rosie O'Donnell, like, it wasn't the biggest secret mm-hmm. until she, like, made it mainstream. And then everyone's like, what? Rosie O'Donnell? Uh, she's not gay. And then she's like, I'm gay. And they were like, boo. Yeah. I couldn't say it before she did. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know how that is. I've, I've, I've had friends and, and people I've known that'll be like, yeah, you... Well, with me, it's more like of a bisexual gaydar. Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I look at some people and, and I see the way the way we talk and the way we do things. I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're probably bisexual. <laughs> and and so far I've been right for the most part. Well, but the yeah, so no one really knows about her. But I don't know if you're Queen Latifah, write the show. <laughs> yes, that would be awesome when we had Queen Latifah right into the show. That would be awesome. Dear Thespian Talk, I wish to dispel the rumors. <laughs> Like, like we're TMZ or something. I know, right? Oh, God. TMZ. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Those guys. Eh, why are they still a thing? I have seen TMZ like a few times when I used to live with a friend and his girlfriend, and she was real into it. And everybody there had frosted tips like it was 1998, and it was kind of awkward. Oh, God. I tried the frosted tips thing once when I was in college. <laughs> no. The look does mean... not, the, it does not work for me. It looked good in the 90s, but now it just makes you look like you're part of, you know, Sugar Ray and, you know, <laughs> just saying. Sugar Ray, they had like one or two good songs that I can think of. Well, their first album was called 15 Min, or I think it was like 1459, meaning that their 15 Minutes of Fame was almost up, mm-hmm. which turned out to be pretty apt. And I actually hope that Todd in the Shadows does a uh, a one-hit wonderland for yeah. them. That'd be really great. It's like, what was it? Was it Every Morning was like their big hit. Yeah. And then I remember they did a cover of Abracadabra on that same album. We played the fuck out of that. Because <laughs> it was about that time we had a – my family had a – No, it, Every Morning was their second hit. Fly was their first. Okay, so they're not technically a one-hit wonder. Okay, so they're a two-hit wonder. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I actually – I guess I forgot about Fly. Hmm. Yeah, it's – I remember listening to it, like it being on the radio while I was playing Super Wario World on my um, – my Game Boy uh, three, what was the three? Virtual Boy. Ah, uh, that's how long ago that was. You actually had a Virtual Boy. Wow, I did. I thought it was. I never awesome. had one. I never. Well, I wore my glasses while I was playing it, so apparently I was shielded from any kind of eye damage. So. Yeah, or maybe it made it worse. Mm. Have you have you had to get stronger prescriptions since then? Well, yeah, but here's the thing. I've been wearing glasses since middle school, and both my parents have bad vision, and I also had to have a lot of eye surgeries when I was a real teeny kid. So we always knew that I was going to have bad vision. So Ah. Yeah, it sounds almost like me, except I had to get mine earlier. I like elementary school. Oh, you're one of those little eeny beeny kids with, like, the really thick glasses, and it's so cute because their glasses are mini. Yes, something oh. like that. <laughs> There's Love probably that. pictures of me. You, you could probably find one on Facebook somewhere of me, like in that time when I first got glasses, and you could see it. You're like, look, I got glasses. Oh, little gummer. Yes. <laughs> uh, but we brought up rapping, and this uh, this is going to lead into my shout out for this week because I discovered that Sir Mix a Lot. I don't remember how recent it was, but he did a rendition of "Baby Got Back" with the freaking Seattle Symphony. I saw that this morning on Show My God too. I was listening to it. <laughs> oh yeah, that was like what the. That, that is both like kind of half mind boggling and, and just awesome. I think that's great. It is because we yeah. have like Sir Mix a Lot rapping and there's cellists involved. Yes. <laughs> it's like automatically makes it high culture. Yes, and he got people up there to dance and and everything, and they were so excited too. They're yeah. like, look at my booty. 
Yeah, some of them were really getting into it. I was like, hello. <laughs> it was really, really weird because people were like almost twerking in the presence of violins. So I'm not really sure how to take that. <laughs> Not sure what's going on in that world, but working in the presence of violins. It doesn't seem like that's something that should be, does it? No, but it it happened and it works and it, it's great. Oh, it, was, it looked like a lot of fun. I I had, I had wish I I had been there and actually been of the female persuasion to get on up there and do it. And when he was calling people up, I was thinking, okay, it's just going to be like four or five or whatever. Yeah. And then all of these women are coming up. It's like holy shit. <laughs> They're like, why, I've got back. I'll, I'll get up there. Yeah, it's like, oh, God, and a lot of them do have back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah, so do you have any shout-outs for this week? Um, crap. Uh, well, then, um, let's see. Uh, actually, yes, I do. I don't remember. No, oh, wait, no, I, I yeah, we haven't used we, – we, we shouted out this artist on Lesbian Talk, so I don't think it counts. But um, there is a really great singer-songwriter named C.N. Lester, and they are out of London. And um, they have an album out. It's on iTunes. I know that they have a new video that's coming out in June, and you should totally check them out. Great, incredible voice, very – like a soulful Tori Amos-esque voice. Hmm, sweet. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, oh, so that – I guess that's going to be it for our shout-outs. Let's go ahead and hit the news. We don't before have... the news hits us? Oh. Yes, before it hits us. And this first one, everybody and their grandfather knew about it. If you watch what, you know, what the Fuck is Wrong With You Live, Nash did cover this, but I found this about the same time he did. And I, I got a few things I want to say about it too, so uh, here we go. A Minnesota man was arrested last week after pulling a shotgun on a neighbor who was teaching his 7-year-old daughter to ride a bike. According to the arrest complaint, 61-year-old Gary Drake began making comments about the father's tactics May 25th as he taught the girl to ride on the cul-de-sac they shared. The father told his neighbor, I've got it, which apparently angered the older man. If you don't like my advice, get off my street, Drake told the man, who reminded his neighbor he didn't own the street. Well, no, but neither do you, old man. Uh, And it gets better. This apparently angered Drake even more, and police said he went inside to retrieve a Remington 870 shotgun because teaching your child how to ride a bike is serious business, apparently. Serious business. Very serious business. I mean, I would hate to see what he would do around here because my my, uh, cousin lives with us and her two kids, and she's been teaching them to ride bikes and everything. I would hate for him to try and and, and pull this shit on her. I mean, number one, that would be stupid. Number two, she'd beat the shit out of him. She wouldn't be like this this father here. She would, she'd go in there and be like, you go pull shotgun on me on my kids, I'll kick your ass right here from here. <laughs> oh. I mean, this is the same cousin who, when she was younger, was able to headbutt through a brick wall. Wow. Yeah. So you, you, you get her upset at your own peril. Well, here's the thing, and I think that it needs to be said again, unfortunately. A gun, a firearm is a tool. Mm-hmm. It's a tool that you can use for a variety of things. However, it's not an automatic I'm right switch. Right. You know, just because, I mean, I mean, that's, you know, the famous saying, whoever has the gun makes the rules, but it, it, it's like trying to call 911 at, because your order was wrong at McDonald's. Yeah. That, you know, that's... having the gun doesn't automatically make you right. No. In fact, having the gun might make you even more wrong, just like this man in the situation. Mr. Drake, you are wrong. I don't care, but you are wrong, and I don't give a shit if you are influenced by alcohol or if you have a big gun pointed right at my face. If you are wrong, then you are fucking wrong. And, and I like how like the wife dragged, got the gun away from him and dragged her husband inside, and then she was the one to talk to the police. Mm-hmm. Because like, well, I could just say, what you stop? Like, what are you thinking? Things? Go watch your shows. Go watch TV. Yes. Go, go sit down watch Duck Dynasty or something. Jesus Christ. He probably watches it too. <laughs> like I can totally see this wife like going over there with some kind of like baked goods or gift basket and like I am so sorry. He's just been such a douche recently ever since the medication. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish I wish there was a follow up where they mentioned that. Yeah, she she actually brought the goodies. That would be awesome. I would I would I would happily take those. In my head canon that happened. So Yes. Yes, we will we will go with Omega's <laughs> my head, head canon, canon for the news. 
Put that on something. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh. So, this next one. Oh. With video recorders so widely available on phones, on computer tablets, on tiny cameras, as opposed to not being available on tiny cameras, police are seeing a spate of cyber peeping cases. Cyber peeping. But that same availability of cameras, according to Montgomery County Police, allegations made public Wednesday, produced an odd twist. The victim recorded the peeper. Oh! I read this and I felt so vindicated. I was like, you go, girlfriend. <laughs> the go. 18-year-old foreign exchange student recorded her host sliding an un- iPad under the door, authority said. Darian Lamont Tucker, 39, of Potomac, was charged with five counts of visual surveillance with purient intent, officials said. The fuck? Purient? Just, is, just say it plainly. Look, he was trying to see her naked. Come on. Yeah, but it's like, that sounds like a legal term, though. Yeah. Uh, accusing him of using an Apple iPad to take inappropriate videos of an 18-year-old foreign exchange student who was staying in his home. At least, okay, okay, this is a horrible situation to begin with, so don't let, don't, don't let what I'm about to say, you know, you know, take away from that. But as horrible as it is, at least she's 18. It could be even yeah, worse. True. Could have been even worse, but at least she's 18. It's still heinous. It's still, still, you shouldn't do that. But You're still a douche, but it's not statutory. Yes. So, this guy's still a douche. Tucker thought he was doing okay. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Tucker thought he was doing so furtively by sliding an edge of the iPad under a bathroom door, according to charging documents. And no, you don't do that. Okay, this, that's this like is... how your cat thinks he's slick, like when he just puts his paw under the door, but you're not supposed to know he's there. Yeah. No, it's cute when a cat does it, not when you do it. No, it, it may be cute when a small child does it. Or like, what are you doing? Here's my finger. No. What you doing, Daddy? <laughs> Build a rocket, son. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Bill Ingvall. <laughs> oh, but but and even then, okay, you're gonna slide the iPad under the door. Okay, assuming he's, uh, I'm, in fact, I've got an iPad right here with the cameras on it. Okay, um, this guy's probably stupid, so he's probably sliding it to where the outer camera is facing out, and he's sliding it under the door, damaging the hell out of the screen of all things, and just you know being stupid with it. I mean, and even if it's doing it the other way, if he actually is smarter than that and he's doing it the proper way, you're still damaging your iPad because yeah. the bottom of the door is going to be damaging your screen. Like, I don't understand why people just can't search www.pornhub.com I know, or .net. I can't remember. But like, there there's, are. There I mean, are if you're, of them. All you just, you could even do a Google image search for boobies. Okay, we live. If we, we live in the time where yes, there's a camera on everything, which means there is such free porn for you. That you don't have to go creeping, you know. Yeah. yeah, and it's not, and it's not necessarily the illegal free porn. Right, right? there is free and legal porn. Free out legal there. porn made by people who are like, we are porn stars. Watch our show. Yes, or or even those that just want to say, hey, we just like to fuck and we want to show it off, man. You know, there's no big deal. You don't, and and even if you want to toss money at some of these porn stars, you can actually go and find different porn stars that put together their own scenes. Support our Kickstarter. Yeah, something like that. Uh, it's actually called Clips for Sale. Check it out. Yes, oh, that is my porn recommendation of this week. <laughs> go go support porn for everyone. Yes. Don't creep with iPhone. It's so weird, too, because it, it always turns out to be teachers, and that kind of creeps me out because yeah. I – here's a great game for everyone to play. Here's my second shout-out. Everybody at home, go to the sex offender registry and look up your zip code. Because oh, God. this was suggested on a website, and I was like, okay, I'll put – not the web – the uh, – the zip code where I live now, but the zip code where I lived when I was a kid, and I found out. I saw a familiar name, and I was like, what? I found out that a friend of mine's father, who was a teacher at my high school for many years and retired a few years back, got busted a few years ago for, like, 35 counts of child porn. And I was like, oh, you never know. Yeah. Oh, dear. I I think I might actually look that up after the show, because I'm curious about about where I'm living now. (laughs) People at home, do it. You'll be surprised. Yes, and she did bring up the fact the teacher, and, well, at the time, the guy was a physical education teacher. Uh, Just goes to show. It's like, really? Wow. Now, I'm not saying that all teachers are bad, and teachers in the audience, we don't mean you, obviously. Obviously, you touch the future and everything, but I don't know. In in, in the good way, not in the naughty way. Yes. (laughs) 
nobody made that kind of a joke before now that I've heard? It's like Someone probably well, because that, that slogan is old. That's like a slogan from the late eighties, early nineties. I touch the future, I teach. Okay. So We're just old, that's all. Oh god, we are. Oh. So in oh, conclusion, but... don't touch kids, amen. Yes, do not touch them. Do not do like like the woman I think it was last week who 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 tried to get kids to Say, you know, try to get kids to help her with her love life and give them hugs and touch them on the leg. You don't do that. No. No, don't do that. Uh, and and speaking of, of of such things, this guy, there, ever since that one asshole decided that his his super his not his superiority complex, but uh, his entitlement complex got gave him the right. To you know, just say, hey, you know what, uh, you bitches aren't coming on to me, and, and and so nobody's coming on to me, so fuck all y'all. I'm gonna kill everybody, you know, or as many people as he could, and then take the coward's way out. I'm not saying his name one because I don't remember it, and two, he doesn't deserve to have his name remembered. But we all know, but we all know what we're talking. I think we all know what I'm talking about here. But ever since that story came out, I've been seeing other experiences like that. There's even a, a dedicated Tumblr blog to it, um, and what? this. Yeah, there is a dedicated Tumblr blog to for people's stories, you know, women's stories of, of men being. Oh, know. oh, okay. I thought it was the other way around, and I was getting. Oh no, 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 no. Oh hell no. Uh, although I wouldn't be surprised if there was one. It'd probably be very short lived because, well, you know, the turnover rate has got to be great because you post something like that there, and then the cops get on you, and then they pay you a little visit. Well, I was at Pride the other day, or actually this was yesterday, and I ran into an old friend of mine, and Tumblr came up, and I was like, yeah, I don't really understand Tumblr. I think it's like Twitter for pictures. And he's like, it's for gay porn. And I was like, really? I thought it was just for like people to get angry at cisgender people and white people. And he's like, well, there's 14-year-old girls, and there's Doctor Who and Sherlock, and then there's gay porn. And I was like, oh, I never knew. <laughs> well, yeah, they're not wrong. <laughs> Because I, I see the Sherlock, I see the Doctor Who. Well, I also see the My Little Pony, but that's because I'm dating a fan of My Little Pony. Although, in all fairness, there has been like Doctor Who slash stuff going on since forever. Yeah, like yeah. since the 70s and 80s. So. Yeah, and and I do want to clarify that I do I do differentiate between a My Little Pony fan and a Brony. There is a difference. We all we all know what it is. I don't think I need to explain it. If I do, I'll explain it later. Oh, but we that that got us off from the story here. Uh, Sorry about this that. one is no, oh, that's okay. Uh, this one is out of Indianapolis, to which I have to say, God damn it, Indy, God damn it, Indianapolis. Mm hmm. A scary. This was scary. Yeah, a scary experience for three teenage girls began when a stranger followed them around a Southside Indianapolis gas station, police said, and culminated in a car chase on I-465 featuring bullets and shattered glass. Holy shit! Anthony Martin, 28, of Indianapolis, appears in Marion Superior Court this morning – well, the morning whenever this was posted um, – to hear charges against him for his actions the night of March 23rd. Police say Martin followed the Mazda RX-8 in which the three girls were riding after they fled his unwanted attention – at a Speedway gas station at, at the address on Southeast Street. I probably know where that is. That's the scary thing. Wow. A, man, a man chaperoning the three girls saw Martin's white infinity in his mirror and tried to evade him, according to court documents. Police said Martin pursued the Mazda onto I-465, pulled up alongside it, showed a handgun, and shouted, Are you trying to play? Then Martin fired multiple Jesus. shots. Yeah, Martin fired multiple shots into the Mazda, according to a court document, which caused glass to shatter all around. No one was seriously injured, police said, though the man driving the girl sustained cuts to his face from flying glass. Martin faces felony charges of criminal recklessness and pointing a firearm. Girls had attended a car show at Buffalo Wild Wings near Greenwood in the hours preceding, and I, don't, I, I guess maybe – I don't know why that particular thing is important because it just seems like the guy saw them at the speedway. And he was like, oh, yeah, I want to I tap those asses. You know, oh, 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 they turned me down. Oh, oh, I'll make them tap my, oh, oh, you know. His, his entitlement complex grew. Once again, the gun does not automatically make you right. Yes, and in this case, the gun makes you, oh, a scary serial killer type, you know, douchebag. Like seriously, above, potential... above, and, above and beyond potentially injuring or killing the people in the car, the girls and the guy. Mm-hmm. That took place on the highway, 
So this guy was risking his own life and the lives of a whole fuck ton of other people who might have been involved in a serious car accident. Yeah, and and I've been on I-465 enough times to know how traffic can be at certain times of the day, especially during certain times of the day. Yeah, that that's not a place you want to do a shootout. You don't want to, well, you don't want to do a shootout anywhere except the shooting range, but but that is definitely a place you do not want to do a shootout. That's just you don't do that. Oh my god. And and I know there are plenty of there's at least 2, 3, 4, 5 um trucking companies that have their uh, that have their damn uh, operating centers there, terminals, whatever you want to call them. And so you have those trucks coming in and out at just about every day of the week. <laughs> and imagine if how many of those just, you know, got caught, caught up in that accident. You could have damaged a lot of shit, buddy. Seriously. Just because you wanted to get your dick wet with somebody who did not want your dick in the first place. And they're teenagers. So I'm assuming they're under 18, which makes you even more of a creeper, Anthony Martin of Indianapolis. If you'd gotten your way, it would have been statutory. Yes, very much statu- statutory. A statutory possibly foursome. Maybe if five of the other guy was like, involved. I don't know. On the highway, this is not Grand Theft Indiana. No. You don't get points. No. Yeah, you, you, you immediately got to three stars, and you're now facing charges, and, and you're in prison where you fucking belong. So, yeah, you, you, just, you just stay the fuck away. You know, get out of there. Just, just, no. Uh. Oh, and even more news with guns out of New Kensington. Oh, under dangerous weapons policies, kids have been suspended for everything from bringing a toy gun to school to using a hand gesture as a pretend gun. Now, see, this I don't agree with, but continue. Yeah. Because of the times we live in, even non-firing toys violate zero weapons rules. Non-firing toys. Darren Simic, 7, along with his mom and dad, was on his way to a meeting with the New Kensington Arnold School District Superintendent Friday in Westmoreland County. I've never claimed to be a perfect parent. I didn't raise a perfect child, says his mom, Jennifer Mathabell. On Wednesday at Martin Elementary, New Kensington, Darren found a toy gun in his backpack. It was plastic and had a big, bright orange tip. Darren's mom, a nurse who works the late shift, sent him off with a spare backpack that morning. She never saw the toy in an outside pocket. And arriving at school and discovering the toy gun, Darren made a good decision. I handed it to the teacher, he said. He, he handed it over and said, I'm not supposed to have this, his mom said. But the district went by the book and his parents were called. She said, he cannot come back to school. I sent him the next day anyway, according to his mom. Earlier this year in Chicago, there was a nearly identical case. An 11-year-old boy brought a toy gun to school again mistakenly. A rights advocacy group, the Rutherford Foundation, represented him. Policies were changed. But there will be no total reprieve for Darren. Oh, no. Exiting the superintendent's hearing, his mother says he can go back to school on Monday. He has a total suspension of two days. Darren's parents respect the importance of rules, but Jennifer has worked hard to help Darren make good decisions. And it's it's, it's to sum it up, and you, you, you kind of started hitting on it when we, we were at the beginning there. The, this whole zero tolerance policy shit is, is is stupid. Like I understand the intent. God knows I do. Yeah. But at the same time, we have common sense. Like the kid with the who bit his pop tart into a gun shape, and like, okay, how hard is it to point? I'm pointing my finger like a gun just right now. You know, kids have been doing that since forever's. I mean, Jesus Christ, people. Yeah, we used to do that as kids. I mean, oh my god. I remember one winter when we were living in Wyoming. I, I found some like some hard snow. I was able to shape it into the form of a gun. And, you know, we'd go around outside and play like I was blasting people with it. And then and, and, and so it was like, what, am I suddenly dangerous because I played with toy guns? Hell, I still have at least two or three toy guns. And they are actual, you know, you can tell they're toy guns. Well, the thing is, I mean, everything did change after Columbine and a lot of things that followed. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was in high school, I brought a World War One bayonet into class for, you know, for some history project. Mm-hmm. And no, nothing bad ever happened to me. I was never called to the principal's office. I gave my presentation. I put the thing back in my locker and I came home, you know? Yeah. And that's, like, 
that's and the way I, it should be. I mean, it's, I, it's it's it should be a case by case basis. Yes. Okay. It's a toy gun. Okay. You know, just don't play with it during class. That's a real gun. I take this away. We call your parents and possibly the police. But like when stuff like this happens, it actually weakens the position of gun control because every right wing asshole ever is going to be say say that they're taking door guns away from kids because the right wing or the left wing is banging whatever they're banging because I can't talk because I'm stupid. But you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it just gives them. I mean, it's such a such ludicrous example that it will swing people to their cause and be like, yeah, you know. So it actually damages the the cause that they're they're trying to support, it which does. is kids not being dead yeah and, and and all it takes as we've as we've said and we'll probably keep saying until we're blue in the face and rotting in the ground is use some goddamn common sense if you know the kid i mean you're the teacher okay this is elementary school last time i checked you have only the one teacher for all your classes well at least most of them i mean you have like maybe a specialized music teacher or what have you and so that teacher should know his or her students yeah, well enough to that... know that, okay, if they were to bring a gun in, is it a toy gun? It's a toy gun? Okay. And if they say, hey, you know, it was, this was my, you know, you know, this was accidentally left in there. I didn't realize it was there. I'm turning this in. He's doing the right thing. Then you just say, okay, you know, just don't make sure it doesn't happen again. And, and we'll go on our merry little way. It should be that simple. Yeah, but see, then that teacher thinks them probably thinks themselves, what happens if this gets out, mm-hmm. and I will be disciplined for not having done something? Then they have to go to you know the principal about it, and then the principal's like, oh, zero tolerance policy, you're out. You know, yeah. so I, I can see, I can see it from both ways, but I think that the principal was the one in error yeah. in this case. Oh, I agree. I, I, I do agree with that, and I think the whole policy itself should be changed. To where if the teacher does get into that particular situation like I was saying, then there would be no repercussions. It would be like, oh, okay, he made a mistake. All right, just don't do it again. And that would be just just all the way up. They would say the same thing. Okay, it was a mistake. All right, all right. You know, investigate just to just to verify everything if you have to, but don't sit there and be like, oh, oh we need to toss him out of school. Yeah, toy gun. Rah, 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 rah. You don't do that. I like how you sounded like the hamburger just then. <laughs> a rubble, rubble. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, and our last news story for today. Also, also going around school, being you know, you know uh, centering around schools, and and uh, it's actually in uh, Ohio, Cincinnati of all places. Ohio. Yes. <laughs> WKRP. I wonder. I wonder. I love know. that show. I remember it. Uh, veteran teachers are leaving their jobs over the highly specific morality clause in their new contracts with the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. The revised contracts, I swear I can speak, bars teachers, whether they're Catholic or not, key term here, from living with a partner or having sex outside of marriage, using using in vitro fertilization, living a gay quote-unquote lifestyle, or publicly supporting any of those things. Well, I would be fucked. Uh, because I would gladly live with a partner. I, I would gladly live with my girlfriend outside of marriage. Uh, well, we we. Well, here's the question I have that. when I read this at first: How are they going to know that you're having sex with someone outside of marriage? Like, that is a good question. How are they going to find this out? Uh, they, they, there's Catholics. They would find it away, I'm sure. Hmm. First grade teacher Molly Shoemate, a lifelong Catholic, ended her 14 year career at the elementary school she attended rather than risk disciplinary action for supporting her 22-year-old son, who is gay. Good on you. Yeah. Yes. If my son were to say to me, will you go somewhere with me that is supported or run by gays and lesbians, I would have to tell him no, according to that contract, she said. And if my picture was taken, what would happen? If her son were to marry a same-sex partner, Schumat said she's been told she would have faced reprimand, but not fired if she went. Oh, you supported your gay son. But how dare son, you go to your son's gay. wedding? Yeah. yeah, how dare you go to your own son's wedding? That's yeah, I know, right? Ugh. That's not what Jesus wants. Yeah. For me to sign this contract, I feel like it would, I would be telling my son I've changed my mind, and that I don't support him as I did, and I won't do that, she said. Dr. Jim Riggs, superintendent of Cincinnati Catholic Schools, said there were no new requirements in the teacher contracts, but rather laid out in abundantly clear language some of the principles of the Catholic Church. The specifically worded items of the morality clause appeared to be a reaction to recent lawsuits over controversial firings or dismissals. 
Computer teacher Trista Diaz, who was single, used in vitro fertilization and was then fired by the archdiocese. A jury awarded her more than $170,000 after she sued the archdiocese for discrimination. Because, you know what, maybe single women just want to have a kid, too. Well, you know, there was another case, and I forget what state that it was in, and it was just like a year or two ago, where it was a woman and her husband, and they had tried everything to be able to conceive, and nothing worked. And so the in vitro fertilization was covered under their health plan, and everyone knew about it, and they were like, all right, that's cool. And then somebody, like, way higher up said, wait a minute, you got IVF, that's against God's laws, and you got fired. Even though her own school was aware of it, and had no problem with it. And I think she also sued, and good for her. Yeah. And she actually did end up uh, getting pregnant, so good for there her. There you go. So, hey, you know, did, did, I think it all worked out in the end. Uh, I'm assuming she got a, either her job reinstated or got a job somewhere else, too. I forget, but some. Uh, I, I, mean, I think that she sued, and I hope that she did. But, I mean, when stuff like this hits the news, you know, there's a lot of schools that will say, hey, you know what, come – you seem to be a really awesome teacher. Come teach at our school. We're secular. We don't have any bullshit like that. Yeah. And it goes on to say a dean of students at another Cincinnati Catholic high school was also fired last year for supporting same-sex marriage on his personal blog. See, it, it's it's bad enough that you have these people you know, saying you have to be – you know, do certain things that are not necessarily harmful to students in, in their contracts or whatever. You know, have your beliefs or whatever, you know. And, and, and of course, you don't want to spend your entire class sitting there talking about your beliefs. You don't want to, you don't want a science teacher getting up there and saying, all right, back, back 6,000 years ago, God, 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 God. You know, you need something to curb that because that's not what science class is for. Mm -hmm. You have things like that. But then you have the contracts like these morality clauses where, and in, even in Florida, in fact, hell, especially in Florida, where we've well, seen teachers, Florida. yeah, we've seen teachers get in trouble for, you're just not even not even doing anything pornographic, just maybe posing for some guy's uh, publication, not publication, um, you know, advertising, advertising boats or something in, in a bikini, and she just happens to look hot, and she got in trouble with the school because she did that to make a little extra money on the side because in this country, teachers are paid shit. Well, I don't like the idea that your employer would be in charge of your morality. Like when you are doing things – at work. I mean, obviously, you want to maintain a professional workplace. But the things that you do in your spare time, mm -hmm. especially if you are not represented as a member of that company, really, it's none of the company's business. And right. most companies will draw that line. I mean, the ones that, that don't, the ones that you know want your Facebook password and stuff like that, I would not want to work for such a company. No, I would tell them, no, you do not get my Facebook password. Or if I give it to you, I'm changing it within five seconds after I finish this application. Or something like then abandon that Facebook and create another one. You that know? would be an idea as well, but I, I would rather not have to go through the hassle and just say, hey, look, my Facebook, my personal business, if you want to see what I do, you have my name. You are able to look it up. I don't hide anything. Uh, whatever I put out there is what I want to put out there with some exceptions with some Tumblr posts. <laughs> there was one cross post recently that was um, – it was basically a whole bunch of topless people, men and women. I saw that. With the whole inspirational thing. And then that like that and the preview pick was just the one is like you have you have like the word and then you have like like D cups right there, it's just boom, it's like, oh shit. I got sad because mine don't look like that. I wish mine looked like hers. Aw. My internet is happy. <laughs> oh, so but, but uh, I don't I just don't like the idea that because you work for an employer with specific views with a capital V, you're automatically beholden in some way in your personal life. Like the whole Hobby Lobby thing saying, well, we don't think women should be on birth control, so we are going to actively do what we can to prevent our own employees from being able to live their lives. They're not your indentured servants. No. I mean, unfortunately, it's no longer 1753. Yeah. Well, unfortunately for them. Fortunately for us, because I, mean, I would yes, rather it's... not live back then. Obviously speaking, but you know what I mean. Yeah, and in, here's the thing. Here's another thing from this 2014-2015 contract for Cincinnati designates educators as teacher ministers, which is seen as a legal maneuver to protect the archdiocese from discrimination lawsuits. Well, in that case, if they're ministers, they have wouldn't they have to go through some kind of ordination? You would because think... even those internet churches where you send twenty five dollars mm -hmm. and you, they send you a certificate, you are ordained in their church of whatever. Yeah, but. I I really hope some some secular lawyer challenges that, 
because that does sound illegal. To be a member, to be an officiate of a church, I believe you have to do, at least go through something. I mean, I know to be a deacon, because I just heard this in the news this weekend, you have to go through, like, this seven-year thing, even just to be a deacon. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think this is squirrely, and I hope that a secular lawyer comes and punches holes in it. Yeah, all of the holes, and, and they get filled up with rich, creamy, buttery justice goodness. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know where I was going to go with that, but <laughs> it's like a Justice Twinkie, all the creamy rights inside. Yes, you can quote so, me on that. Yes. So uh, with that, that is our news. We got about a little over, yeah, about a little less than twenty-five minutes left in the show. So uh, we do have some time for a little, little something else to add in here. Um, if if my page will actually load it. Bonus but, news. Yes, bonus news. Bonus looking over things. And this one is out of addict, addictinginfo.org, if it will actually open up the page. <laughs> there it goes. It's coming. Oh, so – and you are – okay, here it is. Uh, this one was actually from May, you know, the, the May 31st, so it's a little over a week ago. Well, close enough. Yeah, and the headline reads, Virginia court official tells atheist couple they have no right to be married because they don't believe in God. <gasps> Oh, on, on, on behalf of agnostic atheists and the like out there, I want to say to you, first off, Virginia, fuck you. I bet this doesn't end well. Oh, no. Although I do like the picture of the couple that they have up here. They look pretty awesome. You sent it to me? You did? Yeah. Yes, I did. I it is it. right there. <laughs> yeah, it's loading slow for me, too. Oh, right there it goes. Yeah, it, it, I don't know why. Could it be that the FCC is – is, is throttling any connections to addictinginfo.org? I wonder. Probably not, but... <laughs> well, we have Verizon Fios, which is pretty good, so... Yeah. I mean, I can be uploading stuff and watching Netflix on my TV at the same time. Yeah, it's not loading for me, so I'll, I'll just take your word for it. Okay. Okay. But, uh, but yeah. And, and, and actually, I do have AT&T, and every time I upload something like, like the MP3s for this show or any of my other shows, it wants to throttle down everything else, which I hate. Although it only does that when I upload to WordPress. Hmm. I wonder. So anyway, so court official in Virginia tells atheist couple they have no right to get married. Uh, marriage is a right that belongs to any consenting adults. Key terms, any consenting adults. But an over-religious court official in Virginia has a message for atheists and other non-Christians. You have no right to get married if you don't believe in God. Bud Roth is a court-appointed official, officiant rather, in Franklin County, Virginia. He performs wedding ceremonies for couples who go to the courthouse to get married. Atheists, however, have no right to get married as far as he's concerned. And Bud Roth, you are officially sucking at your job. You're, you have one job. In the terms of this article, and that is to marry people who want to get married. You do not question whether or not they believe in the same God you do. You do not question whether or not they have the same naughty bits as you do. You just marry them. That's your it job. It seems like the right wing is – or I'm sorry, the religious right is so angry about everything. They're just looking for shit now. They're like, who can I oppress and get away with it for at least another five minutes? Yeah. Yeah, everybody, everybody who is being oppressed by the right, you know, the, the far right wing Christian, uh, the, 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 those types of people need to raise up and give them a collective kick in the balls. And then say, no, we are not taking your bullshit anymore. We are moving on. Uh, when Morgan Strong and Tamar Courtney contacted the county courthouse to seal their love for each other after six years together, they were directed to Roth. Roth refused, refused to perform the ceremony at the courthouse and only agreed to marry the couple if they tied the knot at his church. Oh. A deal was struck, at, and the cost and date were set. Strong and Courtney will go through the legal part of the ceremony at Roth's church, and that's when the whole situation turned ugly. Roth asked the couple about their religious beliefs, and upon hearing that he would be performing a ceremony for an atheist and an agnostic, turned the couple away. Why? Because they didn't know where God was. That's right. Roth refused to marry the couple out of sheer religious – Maybe that's religious... why they're always asking you if you found Jesus because they're still looking. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what? That's I know where joke. Jesus is. I know where Jesus is. He's in, he's in Illinois. And he doesn't, oh, is that, and the, he... that the big buttery Jesus of the well, song name? 
Well, no, 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 no. Jesus is a, Jesus is in Illinois, and he has a weekly he has a weekly video show. Really? Yeah, Nash. Because he is internet. Jesus. Oh, lol. <laughs> I thought you meant I thought you meant that big statue. No, that I there don't is a folk song is. about big buttery Jesus. I don't know either, but it gets played on Nash show pretty regularly. <laughs> big buttery Jesus, melt him down and 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 melt the butter on a big popcorny cross. That would be that would I would eat that. I would eat the hell out of that. I don't care if if it was like at Easter. Boundaries. A lot of a lot of um, <clears throat> it's a tradition to make like a butter lamb. I mean, it was always the tradition in our family, and so you're basically eating the butter lamb of yeah. God. Uh, All over your corn on the cob. Om nom 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 nom. <laughs> well, it was always the responsibility of my one aunt to scope the butter lamb because she was really good at it. Mm-hmm. And then one year she tried to pass it along to me and my cousin. And I think mine was okay, but my cousin said it looked like a big dog. But hers looked worse because the leg looked like all the legs were out of place. And so my aunt decided that we were hopeless at butter sculpting and we'll just buy it from the supermarket. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could do very well at butter sculpting. I might be able to sculpt maybe a thing. But it's really hard. Yeah. Like, I didn't think it would be. Yeah, you're not going to see me sculpting, like, like, like little ferrets out of butter balls or whatever, you know. You're not going to see me doing that. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, disappointed, Morgan and Courtney decided to discuss the situation with Roth, and they kindly recorded the conversation. Upon asking why Roth denied them the right to wed, he replied, Because she's agnostic and you're an atheist. I will not marry you. You don't believe in God. I just won't marry anyone who does not believe in God or believes that there is a God someplace. So I'm not going to talk the issue over with you, and I'm not going to argue about it, okay? I'm just not going to marry you, correct? Yeah, because, you know, marriage in this country is more than just a religious thing. It is a legal thing. Yep, it's a legal designation. Yes, if you if you were simply a minister in a church and you did not want to marry them, I would not have an issue. Yeah, because that's, that's a – that's yeah. a private thing. Yeah. I would think you're kind of a dick about it, especially if you were a minister in a church that happens to be the only church within a five or ten mile radius, and, and that's the only church they could get married at. Or maybe it's their home church that, that when they were kids or whatever, but it would still be your right to do that. However, Mr. Roth, you are not a private minister. You are a public official. Your job is to marry folks, among other things. It should not matter what their religion is. It should not matter what their sexual orientation is or their gender identity or anything else. Two people want to get married, you marry them. Yep. And if if they agree to get married in a church that you go to, then that's fine too. You know, Just marry them. That's all you need to do. And the county clerk was contracted, contacted, rather, who was floored by their story. She suggested they contact the judge who appointed Roth in the first place. So they wrote a letter to Judge William Alexander, who didn't see any problem at all with a court officiant refusing to marry a couple simply because they don't share his religious beliefs. What? Fuck you, Judge Alexander. The judge referred to the couple to the other coin appointed officiant who agreed to perform the civil ceremony this coming Monday, which, uh, according to when this story was picked up, uh, they – that they should be married by now. Well, congratulations, you guys. Yes. So they You're actually got it. Show. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. But this incident does raise some serious concerns. First, a civil servant is supposed to serve the public. That means anyone. Exactly what I was saying. As long as a couple has a marriage license, there shouldn't be any problem. Second, Religious discrimination is wrong no matter the venue, but for it to occur at a courthouse by a court official is totally unacceptable and unconstitutional. Because, mm-hmm. hi, religion, you're over – okay, I, I have in my hands two bottles – two tiny bottles of Gatorade. In my left hand, I have the – well, I have the church. It's the red bottle of Gatorade, you know, the church with the blood of the, of the lamb and everything. And then in my right hand, I have – the orange bottle, which represents the state, and how how they they are all a bunch of pissants at times. So at this point, they are pretty much arm's length away from me on either side. They're about as far away from each other as they can get without me tossing one across the room. That is where they need to be. That is where church and state need to be. 
They do not need to be brought together in the middle and touching and making the whoopies and all of that good stuff. They that need... was so internet of you, making the whoopies. Yes. <laughs> the whole point is church and state needs to be separated. People need to get this through your head. We, Me and people like me and people like Omega and people like everybody else on, on all these other podcasts who talk about this shit will keep drilling it in until it gets through the heads of everybody in power and out of power in this country. Church and state do not mix. They are not supposed to mix. They never were supposed to mix. If you have your religious beliefs, if that's what motivates you personally to do something that is fine, but if you if you see a problem with say oh you know two gay people getting married, then that's on you. In this country, they should be allowed to get married. Well, freedom, quote unquote, freedom of religion was originally designed so you couldn't be persecuted by the state for having a religion that is inconsistent with either a state religion or the predominant beliefs of the state. Because that was really important because our nation was mostly founded by, well, in the beginning anyway, religious refugees. Mm -hmm. And so the freedom of religion was actually meant as a protection for the people from the state. But now some people are using it as a way to make the state, make the state again in their own image. Yeah. Like and, people, all the people who keep saying, yeah, but the founding fathers were Christian. Well, not really exactly like what you think. No, if anything, they were deists. Mm -hmm. So it's just, no, they were not Christians. And in, yeah, maybe they were a little religious, but they didn't let that affect whatever, the, you know, whatever and they put in the, the thing Constitution. Is that, okay, that there are some religious beliefs that do line up pretty well with secular morality, like not killing, for example, yeah. not stealing. These are laws that we have in place to prevent anarchy, not because we think that God says so. And so, yes, some quote-unquote moral standards do actually work really well for society. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, in an enlightened society, a lot of those don't. Yeah, it's just, oh, god damn it. People... Again, use your common sense. Yes, very much so. Oh. And I don't see this so much as, you know, this person trying to say, oh, well, I'll go on the internet now and everyone will support me, I'll be famous. I see it more as in he saw the opportunity to punish two people right in front of him and he did that and i bet he went home and jerked it i mean yeah. quite honestly that's what i think happened he probably did <laughs> oh god so so we have we have that all we, we pretty much that's kind of wrung out there uh, the rest of the article is basically the article writer calling him out for everything we've been doing so someone uh, is murdering a small child in your nearest vicinity yeah, I, either that or a child is, is being uh, spoiled, which yeah. is another thing I hate. But um, that that's a whole different thing all the way there. Oh, so we have time for one more quick thing. And to keep on the religious thing, uh, like we maybe. Do. Yeah, like we do. Maybe if, if the uh, link would actually work like it's supposed to. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what I found was uh, this – this is actually kind of an older thing, but it kind of been kind of holding on to it. And okay. it says – and it's from thereforegodexists.com. Oh, I saw this on Facebook the other day. Yeah. Okay, like a week ago. Five ways to stump an atheist. So we got about ten minutes. We could probably breeze through these pretty well. Oh, God. No pun intended. Yeah. Oh. And, and, and I'm going to use my, 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 my most needy voice ever, I'm sure, because this is kind of deserves it. A little bit. There are certainly more than five ways to stump an atheist. Well, if you ask him something he knows nothing about, of course it is. I saw Stephen Colbert stump Richard Dawkins, and Colbert was just giving satirical answers, attempting to mock common answers that fundamentalists offer. You do realize Colbert is just doing it for comedy, right? That's all there is. Dawkins asked his signature question, Who created God? Colbert replied, well, God is beyond time. Dawkins really had no answer to this. Just like Cthulhu. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
He said, well, that is so easy to say. Indeed, it is easy. It is an easily refuted argument. We should remember that there is a difference between stumping an atheist and leaving them speechless. They will flounder, make things up, call you names, etc. And I project onto everything I am doing right now. Everyone I'm talking to. Oh. You kind of sound like Ed Grimley, like, I must say. <laughs> Jesus, is... I must say. Yes. But it is very easy to stump them. In this article, I will lay out five ways to stump an atheist. Number one, ask how they know that God has no reasons for allowing evil. Oh, well, let's see. How do I know that God has no reasons for allowing evil? You know? I'm confused about what the question is. I am, I kind of am too. How how does God, how do they know that God has no reasons for allowing evil? Yeah. Well, evil exists independently. And first of all, the word evil is very subjective. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, someone, you know, who murders a child, you could say, well, that's evil. But is evil is not a evil, like a legal definition. No. You know? No matter, no matter how much W wanted to make it a legal definition, apparently. Eve, evil, the word evil is subjective. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a friend who used to say, oh, my gosh, that's so evil. But she used it, you know, in context of, oh, my gosh, I have to work a double shift next Thursday. Oh, it's so evil. Yeah. Oh, and the first line in this one, atheists like to say that if God did not exist, there would be no evil and suffering. No one says that. Well, Who just... says that? Ah, oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a straw man. That's what that is. Yes. He's made a she straw. said cockily. Yes. And, and oh, look, I, I, I have I have a torch, you know, not not like, you know, the electric torches that, that the British call the flashlights. But but I mean like a proper, you know, on fire can set you ablaze torch. Or even better, I have this over here. I have a fucking flamethrower. Let me just stand back about 20 feet and set the straw man on fire from across the, from across the room. Boom! Yes. There you go. <laughs> well, I will, I will answer that question after you define what is legally considered evil. Yes. That every person would automatically agree. And this, you know, this is the, the, the definition of evil and that we will legally adhere to. So you can be charged with being, quote, evil. Yes. Number two, ask what they would accept as evidence for God's existence. Well, here's what I would accept as evidence for God's existence. Him appearing right in front of me when I know I am of sound mind, I have not taken any mind-altering drugs, I am not drunk off my ass, or otherwise in a state of men- – or any other mental state other than being on pure air and not suffered recent head trauma. But see, here's the thing, though. If you were not in a sound mind, you wouldn't – automatically be able to know that i mean obviously if you dropped acid or something you're like well i've just dropped acid you know but i would say the same thing but it would have to be after my own death yeah but even then i mean yeah you could see that after your own death but how could why 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 would it have to wait till after your own death if god is real why why should you have to because, wait till after his death um actually well, death, well, this, well because um and carl sagan um wrote this really great book called the demon haunted world um, that I recommend people go read, but I can't, it's like, 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 uh, Ebenezer Scrooge said, I can't rely on my own senses. Mm-hmm. I know that there are a million and one different things that can play with my senses and with my, my ability to rationalize. For example, if I became schizophrenic, mm-hmm. if something in my brain changed and I became schizophrenic, you know, ideas that are obviously delusional, you know, and I would recognize now are obviously delusional would make perfect sense to me. So knowing that I can never really a hundred percent rely on my own, you know, my own um, senses and inference, mm-hmm. that would that would put a big thing in it. Like people say, oh, well, if it happens on TV, yes, but there are camera tricks and there are special effects and stuff like that. Right. Hmm. So that that's definitely a thing. Hmm. So number three, ask if they would believe in miracles if they saw one. Well, the fact that we are one of probably the few planets in the goddamn universe that sustains life on a regular basis and has done so for, oh, how many millions of years now? Shit. So I I would say that that is miraculous in and of itself. Just because it's a miracle doesn't mean it can't be explained, I don't think. Right, and again, what constitutes a miracle? Like, you know, if someone is in a mass shooting and they are shot five times – but the bullets hit in relatively – not not harmless places, but hit in places where they can't cause massive deadly trauma. You know, someone say, oh, well, it was a miracle. Well, it wasn't really a miracle. It was very lucky, very good chance. 
So yeah. what defines a miracle? Exactly. You know, oh, well, Jesus turned blood into wine. Well, I can do I can do something that looks almost the same with water and chemicals. Yep. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Number four. Ask them if the cause of nature could be natural. The what? atheists will usually want to say that everything in the universe can be explained in natural terms. But what about nature itself? But, but nature, it, that's the point. Nature is the whole. That is the whole. We are explaining the parts of the whole. That's like trying to describe orange, the, the color orange, without using the word. I mean, yeah. or saying, well, this tastes like chicken, but what does chicken taste like? It, it, nature is natural. That's that's the point. Yeah. It was like, hi. You know, you, you explain, you, you, well, let's see. Oh, you know, you, you explain God without describing, you know, without using any of the synonyms, you know, thousands, hundred millions of synonyms for God. You, well, okay, you could probably do that easily, but still. That's like saying God. Well, there wouldn't be gravity without God. Well, yes, there is. I mean, that implies that, like, God's sitting at the center of every gravitational mass and pulling really, really hard. Yeah. Constantly. It's just, it doesn't work that way. And the last one they have, number five. Ask if they believe that people who do bad things deserve to be punished. Um, I think this should be more of a universal yes. How I'm not really sure how that involves God in any way, because the state has the ability to punish people that do bad things. And also we have a legal definition, legal definition of what bad is. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you say, oh, fuck you, you asshole to somebody in line, that's a bad thing. You probably shouldn't have said that, but it's not against the law. No. And then, of course, they, they bring out the hell, of course, because, you know. We, everybody who doesn't fall in line with this god that may or may not exist is going to go to this place called hell, which also may or may, or may not exist. It's, it's like a scare tactic. But Get in line or you're going to be burning forever. People in non-Christian nations who do bad things are still punished by the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, I, I bet you that that asshole from the, the, the Santa Barbara shooter asshole – you know, I bet you if he wasn't a coward and killed himself, he, he he would be sitting in prison right now, I hope. I mean, the thing is that, like, thinking that the threat of eternal damnation and eternal suffering is the only thing that's, gonna, that, that's going to deter people from being bad, that, that, that's totally not true, because otherwise you would have no crime ever. Yeah. And quite obviously we do. You know, the idea that, oh, shit. I mean, some people say, well, I'll be dead, I won't care. But, oh, shit, you know, if I do something bad, the state will incarcerate me for the next 20 years. That's mm -hmm. a more immediate kind of suffering than hell. Yeah, so, yeah, just, <laughs> oh, so that is it. And we've come down to the last few minutes, so we're going to go ahead and get out of here for this week. Uh, it's It's been a ride. It's been a ride. And for, for those who, who... It's been like a real Guns and God episode, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guns and God and, and, and kids and stuff because uh, it is summer. And for those who, who are actually curious about kind of the behind the scenes thing on my end, uh, I do have there are like six kids that live here on a regular basis, and it's summer vacation. So if you heard any kids screaming in the background like, like Omega did earlier, I don't know if it actually will make it into the recording proper, but considering she did hear it, it probably will. Uh, then I apologize. I, 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 I have do really my best. good hearing, I can hear you all the way from Pennsylvania. Yes, <laughs> but I do my best to quell that as much as possible. So uh, anyways, with that being said, we are going to get out of here. Um, Omega, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at The Omega Geek. You can find me on Blip, well, for now, at um, uh, blip.tv uh, slash The Omega Geek. You can find me on Facebook. I have a fan page, and um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, don't you also do something for uh, Nerdvice? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, you can find me under advice when I write columns because I do occasionally <laughs> write them. And then three weeks later, I'm like, oh, yeah, Vera, I have stuff. And, oh, and I have a website, too, OmegaGeek.com. Yes. yes, go check them all out because Omega is awesome. She is awesome. And if you want to find me on the social medias and everywhere, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer21xx. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. 
And if you want to help support the show and – well, all my shows really – and you know, to help get new supplies, new microphone, I'm sure you people could hear that my microphone is needing a bit of an upgrade. I know exactly what I want to get. Thank you, Nash, for pointing it out I know. I saw that. I was like, ooh, I want that too. Yes. I know exactly what I want to get. I just need to be able to get to it, but – I need a little help getting there. That's why I have the Patreon page, patreon.com slash gomer one double X. Just toss the money my way. Uh, you know, I'm doing it monthly. I'm thinking of setting it to per video. I've talked to I've, I've talked to as many of my uh, uh, patrons as possible, and they seem they, they they seem to be able to adapt to it. So I may switch that up eventually, maybe in the next week or two. But at any rate, you know, just toss some money there, and it'll help me out. It'll help out the show and. And, and things will be improving and upgrading and everything, and, and it'll be all good. And also, if you've seen some, of, especially some of my more recent work, uh, you've seen some artwork by the lovely Becky Hopkins, who is not only my girlfriend but also a really damn good artist and award-winning animator. Award-winning animator, you guys. Yes, damn uh-huh. straight she is. And she also has a Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Hop. So with that… We're going to get out of here. I know. I've said that like three times, and we're still going. (laughs) So until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the Omega signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.